Hey everybody, welcome back to the video's channel and today we look into making consecutive Nux builds way better in the next Nux minor version with some modern features. Here we go. Of course, we all want performant applications, right? And the best part is if you don't have to do a single thing. Well, maybe besides updating your Nux version, because the thing I'll show you now will not need any code changes, but a simple update. Or if Nuxt 4.1 is not out yet, then uh, a simple nightly channel checkout. So uh, let's dive into the actual problem first and see what is the issue right now with consecutive Nuxt builds, because some of you might have experienced that as well. And then let's have a look into the solution. And of course, we have a minimal Nuxt application here. We disabled SSR as it's not important. The feature will work with SSR though, so don't worry about that. It's just for the upcoming build logs. You will see why. And then we have the app folder in here and two pages, an about page with an about header component and an index page with no component. And components, the only thing this about header with saying about header two, three, four, five, whatever. We can just leave it to about header for now. And yeah, okay, this is like a very simple test application. Now let's build it and see what will happen. When running PMPM build, and we see here, I'm still on Nuxt version 4.0.3, so the latest v4 version, we see, okay, things are generated and that's great. This is how it should be. Let's take this part here, right? And just put it in a new document because we will need it in a second. Now, commonly, let's say this is our very first build that we would deploy with exactly these files. Of course, in an actual application, you have way more files, but we can clearly see here, okay, this is the entry file because it's quite big and the rest are error pages, as we see here, CSS pages for error 500 and uh, 404, somewhere in there, and the pages about an index, I guess these two here. And we also have a component somewhere, right? So the about uh, header component. Now, the interesting part is when we change this here now to about header new, and just build the same thing again. Now, after running the build command, we can take once again the generated files with the hashes here, put them in a new file as well, and we'll have a look to compare these. Of course, let's remove that line and we will see what is actually happening here. Let's uh, collapse the taskbar as well. And here we have the full overview and we see a kind of a problem already, right? Let's uh, fix that line. The first line stays the same, that makes sense. But the rest, okay. This also kind of looks fine, but what is with the rest here? These last couple lines, they are all changing. So the name of all of these components, they actually change and of the pages and the entry chunk, which means actually whenever we rebuild and change a single component, well, we would expect, okay, about header changes, of course, and about the view changes, but, but why the rest? Why is the rest here changing? And that's a serious issue because then whenever we do a single rebuild, we cannot reuse any of the JavaScript files. We basically have to throw them all away and uh, users that may be on your page, well, they have to download all the things new, maybe need a hard reload, etc., etc. So that's not good for performance. Actually, what we want is just the files changing actually change. But why is it like that? To answer that, let's have a very simple schematic here. We start with our entry file. So let's say, okay, we have our uh, entry.js here. We start with that, all white, we're good. And this would be our entry file. Of course, when we actually have that in production, that would not be entry, but uh, either just like some hash here, or you can also customize, of course, to have like a prefix and then some hash here. And that some hash, of course, depends on the content of the file which is great because that means whenever the hash changes, the cache is busted and the hash only changes when the content changes. So let's say, okay, this we'll keep this format. As we've seen in the build log, this uh, is not the default in Nuxt anymore, mainly because these names could give away your site structure, but also could move some JavaScript files in some nasty ad block lists. Let's say you have an ad component, so AD. Well, that would uh, not work well. Nevertheless, let's go from here. Then we have some pages. So let's say we have, um, let's copy that over and say we have uh, index.sumhash2.js and we have about, right? So we basically build up our example from here. And of course, these hashes are not all the same. So far, so good. And now about has components, right? So we, we can even say, okay, sure, entry 
has these files and entry has these files dynamically imported, right? So is this code split per page because we don't want to load all of them at once. We just want to load when they're actually necessary. And now last but not least, about has a component, right? So we have, let's copy that over as well. And here we have our about header.js. Now, if we say, okay, this also has a hash, so say some hash four, we're good to go. And also about imports about header. Makes all sense so far, right? And now what we would assume is, all right, about header changes. So the content here changes. That means the hash is updated. All right, so far so good. Now we have our page structure here. And what if about header changes? No matter if it's actually inlined or imported, that is both fine. Let's say it would change its content here. And this would then be some new hash one. And if it's a component that's imported, well, then from about that view, that would also change. If about inlines that, well, then this file wouldn't exist, but instead this would also update to some new hash two. So far, we're good. And this would be the case that we would expect. But now we have a problem here actually, because well, now entry updates as well. So this would go to some new hash three, so like also a new hash compared to before. Why is that? Well, because entry does a dynamic import on about and the name of about changed and the name of about is actually in here in entry. And that means that all the files that actually import entry itself, it will also update. And well, because all the files import the entry file, they need the entry file to work. That here will also update to some new hash four or whatever. It doesn't matter too much. And we have the problem that also components, etc., etc., would do the same as we've seen before. So this is not really the desired outcome, but that is because of the dynamic imports and reusing the entry file. So is there a solution for it? Well, of course, otherwise there wouldn't be this video, right? It would be so anticlimactic just to like, nope, too bad, deal with it. Let's take a look at it. And one baseline available feature that will help us are import maps. If you don't do much with tooling, then you probably have never heard of import maps before, but they can be quite an amazing features by more or less giving aliases and also more than that for imports. So for example, you can just say, okay, import with the name circle. Well, this just points to a certain URL or a square points to a relative path, and then you can just use them. And that's pretty helpful when we have issues that the naming of certain chunks, especially the entry chunk, will cache bust all other files and give them new content hashes, which is not ideal. So how would that look like in Nuxt actually? Well, let's just find it out by installing the latest nightly builds, or if you're watching that in the future, so after that recording and it's 4.1 already, then that's already in the Nuxt version. But for us here right now at that time, it's not. So let's have a look at the nightly build and take a look at how that import map is there. If you've never installed the nightly version, it's actually pretty easy. You use npm nuxt-nightly. That's the package distribution at latest instead of your nuxt here. And then you run the whole thing. You install dependencies and you'll be good to go. That's the only thing you have to do. And it's as easy as a simple package alias. Of course, you have to make sure that you can also define a commit here. So you don't have to always install the latest version and please please make sure to pin your version if you actually run the whole thing in something beyond development. Because, well, it is nightly, every commit is released, and you want to make sure that nothing randomly breaks production. Right? Right. Now, as we see here, Nuxt nightly was successfully installed as an alias for Nuxt with this version and this commit, and we are here and removed Nuxt 403. And now we want to build the whole thing again. While this is building, we also want to make sure that we actually take the chunks that were created so we can compare them later on and make sure that our improvements actually work. But now let's switch into the browser. Well, after running the server with uh, node.output uh, uh, server, as it says here, index.mjs, and also making sure that the port is set to 3001. That's one of my preferences to not in any way use a polluted dev port with some weird things applied. And here we have our wonderful index. Yes, this works as expected, but the most interesting part is the view source part. So let's jump into the source code here. And if we make it bigger as usual, this is, well, in one line of HTML, we have 
our char set, our viewport, and then here comes it, the import map. Let me even zoom in a bit more. Oh, maybe that's a bit too much. Here we go, the import map. So it says script type import map, and then which imports are set? Hash entry is set. And this is set to nuxt slash v underscore bu 90 qdjs so to the entry chunk, which means that now everything can refer to hash entry inside the build scripts. So if we have a look into the other JavaScript files, we will see that hash entry is there instead of referring to this chunk. And that has a huge benefit because now we don't have the problem from before. Coming back to our schematics, like if the about header here change again, then we say this gets some new new hash, all right. Then about new gets some new new hash. And also here the entry actually also gets some new new hash because it still imports about dynamically. Right, so this is only a big benefit for all the other pages now. Just imagine there would be besides index like gazillion others and them having components. They would not get a new hash. So they would basically keep this new hash for here, not the new new hash, mainly because they don't import entry direct, but now they basically import hash entry. So let's say they actually have hash entry and hash entry is resolved through an import map to exactly this and that's it. So entry is still dynamically importing the whole thing here. So this is still the case, right? But what is not the case is that index has that entry referred to. And that's amazing. That's exactly what we want. And this is how the import map helps us here. But the proof is in the pudding. So let's have a look and actually build the whole thing one more time after changing stuff. For this, of course, we go back to VS Code. We go to the about header and we write about header with the fix. And then we run pnpm build again. I'll already open a new file. We remove this part here. We still have this. This is basically uh, before here. And now we want hash after, and then we compare the whole thing. Okay, so let's copy that once again. We'll take all of these, we'll go here, and we have it. Let's close everything else. And if we switch back and forth, we actually see only two things changing, two things that we expected, this here and that, these two JavaScript files. And if you remember v underscore bu 9 dqd, then you also know that this is the entry chunk as we wanted. So the entry is changing. Then in here, this is the about page and the about header component because about is inlining that super small thing, like why wouldn't it? right? So this is changing. Of course, if you have like bigger components, then you would see a few more files changing, but the rest is stable and can be reused. And that's pretty amazing. Now, there's only one catch, browser support. Because if we once again take a look at the script type import map site, we see baseline 2023 newly available. So it is available in all evergreen browsers, but well, since March 2023. That means in all the browsers and all the devices that doesn't work. Now, the question is, is that actually an issue? And the answer is, it can be. But here's the thing, Nuxt is always committed to baseline availability, so that's great. But of course, it would be nice to have some kind of fallback. And the solution here to have some kind of fallback is to disable this optimization if, well, you don't have it, right? If, if you have an older browser. But is this actually an issue? Well, to some degree. As you know, Nuxt is committed to baseline availability and the whole thing is available in baseline, as we've seen in the browser. So that seems fine. But on the other hand, it would be nice to make sure that things at least don't fully fall apart when using older devices, or at least when optimizing your site for older devices or including them in your range. Because even right now, if you want to use Nuxt for like older, older devices and older browsers, then, well, you have to jump through a few hoops already. And the good thing is that this feature can either be disabled through an experimental flag, which is enabled by default. So you can just say like, okay, you know what? I want to switch it off. Or if you set the target of your Vite build in your Nuxt config, then it will also respect that and see, oh, import maps might not be available. I will disable that feature. So then everything works as it did before, which means that on every rebuild, the chunks will be all with different hashes, but at least the site doesn't break on your, I don't know, 
uh, oldest employee's iPhone 2 or so. <laughs> no idea. Nevertheless, it's good to know. And now that we discussed through the whole import map chunk stability topic, definitely have a look at the PR from Daniel Rowe here. This is quite new. And uh, I actually met Daniel in person in Amsterdam a couple days ago, and we had a lovely discussion about it. Also, how to solve that fallback-wise the best. Nevertheless, it's so nice to see what he did in, well, just a plain ride without AI as well. So that's definitely fascinating. Big kudos to him, as usual, for pushing the framework further. And I'm curious what you think about it, especially also the code changes, how it's implemented. It's no witchcraft, and it makes a lot of sense. It also gives a lot of options for further improvements to, for example, bring that also to pages and not only to the entry itself. For the entry, it's easy. The name is entry, right? For other files, it's trickier in terms of naming collisions. But for pages, given that we have the URL and the page name already for, for example, view router, that seems reasonable. Nevertheless, have a look there. Another interesting part from that PR actually is that the import map is added manually here. And of course, when you have pages, this probably is not the most ideal way. Interestingly, Rollup, for example, doesn't support import maps out of the box. There might be a plugin, but Rolldown luckily does. So if you didn't miss the Rolldown video from last week, you should definitely check it out to make your builds faster. Well, then you can also in the future maybe use Rolldown's import map capability uh, if Nux can detect it and build it in. The whole import chunking also in other contexts and not only Nux has a lovely blog post uh, that you can take a look at. Link as usual in the description. And that's it already for this video. I hope you really enjoyed that and look forward to these amazing improvements or maybe they're already there when you watch this in the future and ever wondered what this like hashtag entry and this import map thingy is. I hope it makes sense. Uh, let me know if there's anything uh, missing, any questions, any feedback as usual in the comments. Other than that, I hope to see you next Friday for our next video or, um, well, in all the videos as well uh, at conferences because this autumn is going to be busy, like at uh, VidConf, at uh, View Paris, at the lovely meetup there, um, SquiggleConf, etc., etc. Hope to catch you at some of these. Uh, and if not, well, then online again. Until then, happy hacking. <laughs>